Hi, this is Jim Gibson. Thank you for joining me on my channel today. Very much appreciate it. And if you remember and you like this stuff that we're going to be talking about, give me a thumbs up and subscribe, please. That really counts. I know a lot of people will call me and they'll say, oh, Jim, I really like your videos and everything else. I'm learning so much and it's very valuable to me. Well, if you want to pay me back, subscribe, ring the bell and give me a thumbs up. So let's get started. We're looking at this cable here. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. There's a bundle of six or seven cables, Cat 5e, Cat 6. If you look, there's some damage to this cable. You notice? What is that damage? <laughs> that damage is ultraviolet UV damage to the cable. See, this is what we call IW, inside wire. Now, inside wire can be Cat 3, can be Cat 5, Cat 5e, Cat 6, Cat 7. It's just things that are designed to be inside of a building. And this cable has been designed to be inside of a building, but it has damage to the outside of plastic. The sheathing that holds the interior wires protects them from the elements and things like that. That's because this cable, not rated for ultraviolet, so when the sun shines on it, it causes that damage to the cable. You notice that? You got damage there in two places. Probably all these cables are going to fail here shortly. One of them, if you can see, right next to the black one, has a little crease in it it's, and it's facing up. So it's gathering water when rain comes and stuff like that. And it's the wrong cable. That's first of all. Now, secondly, we got another problem here. The other problem is, why did this person cable every single jack in the house? And they cabled it probably Cat 5e or Cat 6. They cabled every single jack in the house and they brought all the wires to the outside. Now why in the world do you need wires on the outside like that? These wires have to go to a router, have to go to a switch. So that router and switch has to have a 110 AC plug to it. It has to be able to power up. <laughs> now the patch panel obviously does not need power, but the routers and the switches do. And sometimes you, in houses, in residential things, sometimes the router and the switch is together in one unit. But you need to have it as a router and switch. Now, if you're going to do this house and you're going to do it right, the only thing you need sticking out that hole is you need one wire. That's it. Going to AT&T, going to Cox, things like that. And if Cox provides fiber optic cable or AT&T provides you a cable, a fiber optic cable or whatever ISP they're using, then that should be the second wire going into the, the building. Fiber optics is not really a wire, but it looks like a wire. When you put six of them together, like I see here on this picture, um, the sun after a couple years disintegrates the exterior of the cable and it causes problems. Water gets into the cable, and once the inner conductors are exposed, as you can see, some of them you can see where even the color on the conductors have actually been discolored. And once they're exposed, they, their insulation is gonna start disintegrating also. You'd never, ever, ever run inside wire outside. Now, I remember once a guy asked me, he said, I need direct burial cable, and Cable Supply has all these cables, and we can give you advice which one to buy. Uh, this one guy says, I I'm going to run a cable from my house to the barn, and what type of cable should I use? I said, you should use direct burial, and the best thing is take direct burial cable and stick it in a conduit that's rated for underground. And I said, or you can just bury it. It's direct burial. It, it has a coating on the outside that's perfect and, and would hold up in soil, moisture, and everything else. And I answered all his questions, but in this case, if you're going from the house to the barn or from one building to another, if you're going to go underground, you're going to need the underground cable. Direct burial, UV protected is the best. And uh, this case with all these seven or eight uh, cables, you shouldn't have that on the outside of a building. You should only have what you need, and it's called your feed cable, and it should be just one. Now, you can use that outside wire, or, or if you put a box, you should have a box over your cable when it comes out the wall. Sometimes there's plastic boxes with snaps on the side. You can also lock them so people can't get in them and mess with your cable. But there should be a box there. If you look at this picture again, if you look at it, a box would fit right over top of it in the hole. The cables would come in from the back of the box, 
and then you just wrap up the extra, some extra cable, and then when AT&T or Cox or something like that, they put their box right up against yours, and they just feed right across, and then you can do it. Now, the next big disaster I see here is you notice that the cable goes down, and then it turns directly into the house. So what happens is when it rains, the water goes down and goes directly in the house. So this needs a drip loop, what we call a drip loop. And what it should be is it goes down, it passes the entrance to the house, and then it turns around and comes back and then into the house. So the water comes down on both sides and it will come to the bottom of the cable and drip off. Now again, you're gonna have outside cable. If this is outside, and you're not gonna use a box, things like that, you got to put a drip loop in it. And you gotta protect cable from the exterior rain and water and snow and sunlight and heat and cold and all that other stuff. It has to be protected, especially against moisture. It has to be protected and against UV. So in this case, you don't actually have to have UV protected cable if you have a box. All the cables are gonna to come together. Now, where should they come together? Well, I've seen them in garages, that's okay. But if you're in Texas or Arizona, places like that, sometimes garages can get pretty high. And you don't wanna put your routers and your switches in the garage when it's like 120 degrees. But the best place is in the master bedroom closet. And I've seen this a million times. I've seen this in these big $5 million houses. That that's where they put it. Well, again, some $5 million houses have a special closet with all their IT stuff and all their video, uh, audio video equipment and everything else. But normal houses, okay, <laughs> that you're going to be cabling, uh, usually you want to put it in the closet and you should put it close to a 110C outlet. And what happens is, is you take these boxes that are about two inches thick and they can be recessed right into the wall. Uh, and they have covers over them. So you put your switch, you put your router in there, you put your patch panel. Don't, don't do this cheesy stuff where people take the end of the cable and they put mod plugs at the end. That's great for day one, but when you wiggle it and you're unplugging it and everything else and moving it around, those mod plugs get loose and everything else and you start to have intermittent problems. The hardest problem to solve is an intermittent problem. I guarantee you that. So just do it right, do it professionally. Do not put mod plug ends on the end of these cables. Run them into a small patch panel. A 12 port patch panel should handle any houses, okay? Unless you got this huge uh, building. 12 port patch panel. Now, everything I'm talking about applies to both commercial and residential, okay? Um, and so anytime you exit the house or the building and you're coming outside, you gotta have a drip loop and you gotta use the proper cable or the proper protection for that cable in a case. I recommend a case. Now, I need you to subscribe and I also need thumbs up and ring the bell. If this information is helping you and you like it and you enjoy it and everything else and you're learning things, fantastic. Just give me a thumbs up and subscribe, please. And everything I talk about, you can buy from cablesupply.com. Uh, so anyway, these are the things that are wrong. No drip loop, wrong cable, and all the cables going outside. There's no way you can manage this. You know what these cables are good for? Pull string. So you redo all this with a, and you use them to attach to the right cable and you pull it in. <laughs> and then you pull each outlet to the master bedroom closet or hopefully not, but to the garage, that's another good place. Or some other place that's protected within the house that you can get to and you can move your patch cords around on your patch panel into the back of the router or switch. Now, everything I discussed today, all the parts, the uh, Cat5e, Cat6, direct burial, even something I did not mention, which is aerial cable. So all that equipment we talked about and everything else you need for cabling a commercial or a residential property is on our website. And remember, cablesupply.com. You have a wonderful day. Check out my website, cablesupply.com. And thank you for watching today. You have a great day. Bye.